Welcome to Sailing Vessel Sleeker. We're building a big ass sailboat, but this video is about how to use flaring tools to flare, especially stainless steel hydraulic lines, 37 degree. We'll also show you some 45 degree stuff too. And also how to bend those lines. We've got to replace these. And these are just steel, so they have rusted over the years. They came off our auto crane here, which is getting ready to go back together. So we're gonna use stainless. And if you look really close, that pipe in the middle there is stainless. It just has a little bit of different luster to it. And uh, put some salt water on those and they'll rust up real quick. That's just steel. Steel is much easier to flare because it just is. It doesn't harden up like stainless does. Stainless is always more brittle. But we got to show you some tricks and some things to avoid. So let's start off with the flaring tool, the Tool Guy Republic. I bought this kit because it comes with 45 and the 37. We got it set up with the 37 degree die in there now and it just pops on there so it's easy to switch out but I'm not terribly impressed with it. Uh, let me show you why. This batch of flares we did on that tool and you can obviously get it uh, wrong and we found a couple of tricks that will help you out. Now this is stainless steel not steel line so it's going to be more susceptible to cracking because it's a more brittle metal. And you'll need a bending tool, but don't let some monster like Andy get a hold of it because he broke my bending tool. I knew I was going to have to replace this because this is kind of cheap. This one is nice. This type is nice, not this one anymore, because it does do three sizes of pipe, 3 16th quarter and 3 8 uh, And when you got to go bigger, you got to go bigger. And so we've got one of these. This is actually a pipe bending tool, but it will work for tubing if you're careful with it. And you're going to need a bigger pipe bender if you're going to go with half inch pipe, especially stainless steel. Well, that's a $14 tubing bender he broke, so that's why it broke. We need to put a little more money into it than that. All right, I like this tubing bender that goes up to half inch, 3 16 quarter, 3 eighths, and half. This should be harder to break, shouldn't it? So that tubing bender came off Amazon too, more foreign, and it's got dies that go on up to larger sizes, which is great. I think I may like that on a boat, $152 for it. The largest die it comes with is one inch, which is why they have the extension on the handle so you can really crank down on it. And it's got to bolt down to something too. Yeah, works pretty good even for 3 8 inch. Just a bigger radius. I think it goes like that. Maybe a different tool when I'm done with it here. I'm gonna put a brace across it. Maybe it'll be stronger than toilet paper. So let's get back to this TGR gadget. This combination set came with two sets of dies, 45 degree and 37 degree from 3 16 quarter, 5 16 and 3 8 but not half. So I've gone with another tool for a larger diameter. We'll come back to that. First thing to avoid is an old and dull tubing cutter, okay? So say goodbye to it, get yourself something new and sharp. This is a tight quarters tubing cutter, but it works just fine. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on that. Just tighten that down a little bit, do a 360, tighten it down a little bit more, do a 360. You can clamp onto the tubing if you need to, but be careful not to scratch it or dent it or crimp it too much. You know, not too much on the pressure because uh, that may be a spot you need. Because you're gonna need to put a nut on there and then one of these collars and be sure to put these on before you do your flare because uh, if you got a bend in your pipe already or it's uh, got a flare on the other end, you're not going to be able to do it afterwards. And you want to see one nice little line being left there by your tubing cutter. If it starts to do that spiral thing, that's time to throw it to the trash can. Have some patience with it. It'll get there. There it is. Once you get it cut, notice it's going to have a little bit of lip of steel in there and you really do need to get that out, especially on stainless. I can show you right here on the edge of this one. Now this one's already been flared, but you see right along that rim right there, you see that little broken line there? That is the burr that's just been folded back and pressed into the flare and that's not going to be a good seat right there. 
So you want to deburr your tube first. My new tubing cutter arrived, brand new, rigid. This is a nice one. And it's got a little blade in here that you can pull out and you can stick it into the uh, end of the tube or pipe and deburr it. But it, I don't think it's going to do it as nice a job as what you need to work with stainless steel. But that's your, this is easier to use just because of the leverage you have out on it. But if I had to buy one, I'd buy the close quarters one because you can use it everywhere. So get your drill out, considerably larger drill bit, and just drill that ever so gently and you will cut that burr. And even better, if you've got a carbide burr tip like this one, that does an even smoother job. Much better. That's what we're after. Anything that rolled over to the outside, flat file will take that down. So that's what you want to end up with no burr and the next thing to do is to avoid it splitting open like that the first one i did right there look how beautiful that is after that they started splitting okay so you can get lucky but if you don't think you're going to get lucky use heat and we have found that if you heat it up to a nice orange glow it will work every time Now this jig thing just has three steps you gotta go through. Once you get it locked down, you snug it up a bit, and the first one just pushes the end of the tube back in to where it should be. That's called the option zero. And then he tightens that vise on down, flips it over to option one, which is a 3 8 inch. It's called a dual flare, so that's just giving a little bit of a push outward. Then he goes to the 3 8 inch flare, cranks down on that, and that is doing the real flare job there. And if it all comes out right, we get a flare that's not split open. And that looks beautiful. There you go. Stainless steel 3 8 inch flare on a TGR flaring tool. And again, 45 degree is most fuel lines. 37 degree is for most hydraulics. So this fits the JIC's fittings. Now you say, well, just use compression fittings. Yeah, you can use compression fittings too. You don't have to actually flare the tubing. We were out shopping this morning for hydraulic parts and sure enough, there, somewhere in here. Yeah, this is it. Is a compression fitting. This fits half inch. Now, why did we uh, go with compression for half inch? Because we don't have a flare tool that'll do it yet. One's on the way. It'll be included in this video when it arrives. But inside there, see there's there's your little collar you put on it. And there's your flare nut. The problem here is that that flare piece is 10 bucks. And then you still got to buy whatever it goes into to make the JIC. But yeah, if you don't have a half inch flare tool or want to avoid them all together, you can use compression fittings. Remember, before you make the second hand, put your collar and your nut on there. Yeah, do look inside, make sure there's no crack or split or a gouge because that's just going to be a leaking point. And if you're a little too aggressive with your flare, you might need to file down the outside edge to get it to go on. And there it is. You can go from ugly to beautiful. Now it's important to understand you got to have a vise to clamp this thing into. They really didn't give you a good way of bolting that down if you had to. So you're going to need a vise handy to use this tool. And you decided to clamp this one into the vise too and it fits just fine in a six inch vise. Look at that. Oh, sweet. Our Imperial tubing bender showed up and the advantage it has is a much shorter radius. And easier, more compact and everything too. That is much nicer. Right. So you can't flare it any shorter than that. Unless you get a different flare tool. Yeah, we got a different flare tool, but it didn't show up till uh, Wednesday. The other advantage of this thing is it does half an inch. My rigid flaring tool arrived today. You got to look at this thing. This is a fantastic tool. And you can buy them for flaring 37 degree or 45 degree or even the metric stuff is in there. Simple instructions written in simple English. I like that. And the best thing about this tool is it doesn't come apart. But look at this. They put indents along the side so that it lines itself properly with the hole. And I already tried it out on half inch steel. Look at that. It looks great. I think it would do half inch stainless just fine. Now see those little ridge marks on the side? You are going to get that, but that shouldn't make any difference. So that's just where the flare nut goes. Each size has those little rings carved into it and that's how it grips onto the tubing. So step one, slide it down so that you can open it up. This is a piece of 3 8 inch stainless tubing. 
close it up around that, slide it down, set the pan into the side. Not too much because you want to move the tubing back and forth. See, I got it sticking up high, so that's going to be a really big flare, and the flare nut probably won't go over it, so I'm going to back that down a little bit. The lower you go, the smaller your flare is going to be. You'll get used to what you want. When you got it there, tighten that up. Here's the magic of this thing. As I turn the handle, watch inside there and watch that point. Can you see that? It's off-centered. So it's going to look like it wobbles as it turns, and that's what it's doing. It's going around it. It's not bending the whole thing at one time. It's just doing it ever so gently by going around it. So the next piece of the magic to it is this clutch right here. It's spring-loaded, so if it's not too tight, it's going to keep driving the flare tool down into the tubing. But when it gets too tight, it's going to break this clutch loose. I may need to put this in advice. So you can see what happens here is these threads drive the cone down into it to do the flaring but this piece here will eventually release that pin comes up and that puts this thing into like a free spinning mode and you go around two more times and that just smooths out the side so it's not oval there we go a couple more times around there you can see that clutch actually pop back in there you can also take a screwdriver or your pocket knife or something, lift that pin up a little bit, and that clears that clutch to move a little further. Other than that clutch pin possibly not releasing, the only thing I can say bad about it is it takes longer to get, you know, it all unwound from this thing so you can use it. But if you're not going to be making hundreds of these things, I don't see a problem. That's a nice flare. So now you can have fun making flares. We did, and they're actually working. Deck cranes all ready to go back on the boat. And if you're new here, you may be asking what boat? This one here, Sailing Vessel Seeker, SV Seeker. She's going to be a free of charge research vessel once she's on the water. We're going to take students and professors and researchers, citizen scientists, anybody that has a passion for doing something on the water, we're going to take them along for a ride. That crane's going to be part of the operation. And if you want to help support us, then you can purchase any of the tools that we've shown you in this video from Amazon. Those are affiliate links in the description. And if you haven't already, sign up for Amazon Smile. It's where you're portion of your purchase will go to support the nonprofit of your choice. And if you don't have anything better, SV Seeker is supported by the Sea Chest Foundation. So money that goes to the Sea Chest Foundation is nonprofit, and that money will then buy equipment, fuel, and things that these researchers need on this boat. Oh, and we moved the boat to the Tulsa Port of Catoosa on August 12th, and we launch her on August 21st. Come join us in Tulsa.